I was born July 3, 1972, Amy Michelle Terrebonne at Crawford Long Hospital in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. As my French name suggests, I have Cajun roots. My father's father was 100% Cajun. At one point in his life, my grandpa T lived in an apartment in Jackson Square in the heart of New Orleans French Quarter. When he was young, he also helped his mother sell oysters from a sailboat in Galveston, Texas. He was the youngest child of his siblings and was the first not to grow up speaking French. My father's mother grew up Quaker, although she never talked about the faith or practiced it as an adult. You wouldn't know it from looking at me, but the most recent immigration in my bloodline comes from Sweden. All of my maternal grandmother's grandparents were born there. My grandmother grew up in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, where they attended a Swedish Lutheran church where much of the culture was kept alive. Like my Cajun grandfather, Giga's family wanted her to be Americanized, so she did not learn her home language, except for tidbits like more more, which means grandmother. My maternal grandfather's family was a typical European mix from mostly Wales, I believe. Up until about 10 years ago, I'd tell you that I had a super average middle class white American life. I grew up with two loving parents without excess or poverty. I was comfortable and loved. But as I age, I realize that what I thought were totally normal experiences were not the American norm at all. I am grateful for the constant, almost imperceivable influence of diversity in my life. In time, growing in my understanding of diversity and practicing empathy has become central to who I am as a human being. More than anything, I have learned that nothing can take the place of real life interaction with real people. You cannot truly understand an individual's perspective, as Harper Lee says, without walking around in his skin for a while. I spent my childhood years in Aiken, South Carolina. Unlike many white suburban southerners, many of my elementary school teachers were black, in addition to my classmates. This really wasn't something I noticed or thought of at the time, but as an adult, I realized my understanding of black Americans came firsthand as a normal part of my daily routine. During the summer before my fourth grade year, my family relocated to Louisville, Kentucky. We were only there for two years, but those two years proved to be pivotal in my experience with diversity. Louisville is known to have one of the most extensive busing programs in the country and is recognized as the place where desegregation worked. For my fourth and fifth grade years, I rode a bus every day from my primarily white suburb to downtown Louisville, where I attended a fully integrated school. Because of a change in my father's job, we left Louisville after two years. I spent my middle school years in a suburb of Chicago, Illinois. I attended a Lutheran church where I was confirmed, and my brother and I attended neighborhood schools, which were both in walking distance. The Chicago neighborhood we lived in was primarily Jewish. I don't know that I would have noticed it as much at any other life stage, but I was there during the coming of age years. Attending bar and bat mitzvahs was a very regular weekend activity for me. In the middle of ninth grade, my family returned to Atlanta. We moved to Gwinnett County and I graduated from Meadow Creek High School in 1990.
After college, I returned to Gwinnett County, where I began my teaching career at Rockbridge Elementary, then later Meadow Creek Elementary. At Meadow Creek, which was a feeder to my own alma mater, over 50 languages were spoken. When I drove the couple of miles from my home to work, I passed a Romanian Orthodox church and a mosque. Less than a half mile from my home, one of the largest Hindu mandirs in North America was being built. Then in 2005, I began the journey I didn't know I needed to make to complete my understanding of diversity in America. My husband and I decided to relocate our family to rural North Georgia, to LJ, where we could raise our kids and ourselves at a slower, simpler pace. My understanding of empathy would never have been complete without the realization that rural Americans are misjudged and mischaracterized just like other minority groups in America. At 48, my underlying belief about understanding diversity is remembering that each person identifies on some level with a group or groups, but at the same time is still a unique individual. We follow the lead and language of our origins, but we each have a unique and individual perspective on just about everything. And just as that is true of the group with which you identify, it is also true of every other group out there. Yes, empathy is a part of the fiber of my being. The truth is this autobiography only scratches the surface of the experiences that make me who I am. As you get to know me better, I'm sure you'll hear some of my favorite stories. From growing up with two Buddhist aunts, having an Indian best friend, having a father who taught at an all-black college during the Rodney King era, traveling to Japan as an 18-year-old exchange student, to navigating life as the mother of a transgender adult, becoming an ordained interfaith minister, or growing up in a home where my parents both voted different ways. The single unifying thread, the overriding truth of my life experiences is this. We are more alike than we are different, and we're all just trying to figure out this difficult thing called life. The truth is that I'm not quite sure with which group I actually identify. A little bit country, a little bit rock and roll, for lack of a better analogy. But at 48, I'm just getting used to walking around in my own skin, and that's okay. <laughs>